Time Rider with an episode of The Bench. Hey, I'm sorry I don't have a video for you guys this week. Uh, you know, we got like 10 inches of snow up here in Minnesota, and uh, moving all that snow, I'll be honest with you, it just kicked the stuffing out of me, and I was a little under the weather all week. And uh, while I'm back in the uh, shop today, shall we say? Uh, I will put forth a video for you because I didn't want you to think I had died or anything. But first, I kind of wanted to talk about little wooden blocks because, you know, that's how we learn, right? By seeing what others do. And I keep little wooden blocks around because they're nice to hammer on and drill upon and other things. And when you're dealing with 164 scale, well, everything's little. I did find time to work on a Tootsie toy this week. Uh, this little fuel or milk truck or whatever it is. Uh, when I take the wheels off these, you know, I used to tape them off and then uh, it dawned on me that these axles that they use on these things are so hard you can't cut them and you can't bend those tabs back because they just break. But if you heat up the wheels, they get really soft and then I soak them down with white lithium grease and they come right off. And then, of course, uh, it's into the stripper. And the wheels I took and I, uh, and yeah, there's more wheels in there than one Tootsie toy worth, but that's because I did a couple of them. But uh, I cleaned them up with soapy water and then rinsed them using uh, an alcohol water mix uh, to get them ready to put back onto the toy. And of course, once the toy uh, came out of the stripper, uh, it was just a matter of cleaning off that paint. Now, a lot of people wonder why I, I like doing these Tootsie toys, and I Really, they're a part of history. Now, this one is one of the smaller ones, so it was uh, most likely produced after 1969. Uh, but the Tootsie Toys themselves, uh, boy, they date back, uh, they predate uh, Lesney and Matchbox by a long way. Uh, they started making little die-cast cars and stuff in the 20s. Uh, I didn't match the paint. I don't care. Usually, I just shoot these with enamel. And uh, I try to use a color that I find to be believable for the period. Uh, in this case, I'm just shooting it in a, a tester's enamel green. And you can see I taped off the ends of the axles. Uh, that's just so that I don't have to clean them up later. And I just, uh, I don't do tack coats or anything with this. Usually I just kind of layer them up until I get the, the gloss I'm looking for. And the nice thing about enamel, of course, is that it has a... A very natural gloss and uh, real good for the period. Uh, you know, Tootsie Toy, they tout themselves to be one of the oldest American companies because they're still making toys today, uh, just not die cast cars. And then, of course, once I get done with the paint, I, it's enamel, so you have to let it sit for a couple of days before you can really handle it. And uh, whoops, I'm moving that camera around. Uh, then the wheels, uh, they just push back on and. Uh, you know, Bob's your uncle. They are certainly uh, an interesting part of Americana. You know, these little penny toys is what I call them. And then, last but not least, let's take a look at how this little Tootsie wound up. Um, it was a pretty good casting to begin with in that it didn't have a lot of... Uh, short fills or, or corrosive defects or anything so you know painting it green and turning it into something kind of neat looking uh, you know was not that hard but anyway tell me what you think of my uh, my little tootsie here uh, in the comments below and on that note I'll move on to something else I also wanted to take a minute and remind everybody that December 21st is the published date for the Three Blind Mice Grand Prix Invitational. So you still have time to get in on this, and if you don't see your name going across the screen right now, be sure to shoot us an email either on the Three Blind Mice at diecast, uh, Three Blind Mice Diecast at gmail.com, or you could probably email 
uh, me or Paul, I wouldn't email George just because I know right now he's doing everything on a phone and it's hard for him to uh, m manage this. And uh, I've kind of been doing it anyway. I haven't started a lot of new projects lately because I've been trying to clean up all the old stuff. And this van has been sitting on uh, my shelf for months. And uh, it had a little short fill there in the front that I filled in with some uh, glazing and spot putty. And uh, I'm doing black primer. I don't know if that's going to work out for what I'm doing. I'm kind of hoping it will. Uh, but at any rate, uh, you'll be seeing this van on the channel here soon because I want to get it cleaned up. So I had somebody ask me about this Mustang that I was uh, I was closing off that hole on the side where the steering mechanism went, and then you know Juan over at uh, Matchbox Resurrection told uh, or showed me how to use a G string, uh, something completely different than I what I thought a G string was. But anyway, uh, I haven't had a great deal of luck, and I really haven't applied myself to it either. But I'm starting to think that maybe there's something else I might like to do with that Mustang. And then I told everybody I was going to branch out a little bit, and I'm getting into some red lines. And Paul over at Fat Guy Productions was nice enough to send me, I think this is pronounced Torero or whatever. Well, when I got it, this piece right here was bent. And so when I went to straighten it, um, what happened is it cracked. And it cracked right on this spot right here. And then again on the other side, on this spot right here. So I'm going to try to fix this with some plating and see how that works for me. But uh, look for my first red line coming up uh, at some point in the future. I said that I wanted to use the bench for some different things and, uh, you know, like the clock that I did. I want to, I do other projects like that. And plus, I've been an amateur photographer for over 40 years of my life. I started when I was in the seventh grade with black and white photography. Uh, I took this photo several years ago of this hawk. Uh, and then uh, I think one day I was out in uh, a lonely part of Nebraska and I found Hank Williams' Lost Highway. And on that note, uh, me and Cody, we're going to go watch some football and hopefully my uh, beloved Minnesota Vikings will trounce the Detroit Lions. Uh, I'll see you next time. This is Time Writer and I'll leave the light on for you.